Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving into a question we hear all the time from people living on board and prepping their boats for full-time cruising. Can you actually run air conditioning on a sailboat using solar power? It sounds like a dream, right? Quiet anchorages, cool interior, no diesel fumes, and no noisy generator ruining that sunset. Well, the answer is yes. Sort of. It's absolutely possible, but there are a few important caveats. So in this video, we're going to walk through a realistic setup using a 40-foot sailboat cruising the Caribbean, and we'll show you what's possible with about a thousand watts of solar and 800 amp hours of lithium battery. Let's start with the setup. Picture a typical 40-foot monohull like a Beneteau or Catalina or Jeannot. You've installed about a thousand watts of solar panels, probably spread out over your bimini, your davits, and maybe a custom arch. That's a solid solar array for a boat of this size, especially if you're using high-efficiency panels. You're cruising through the Caribbean now where sunshine is plentiful and the need for cooling gets very real. The goal here is to be able to run the air conditioning for comfort, especially during the hottest part of the day, without relying on shore power or running a generator every evening. So let's talk about the kind of air conditioning system you'd be using. Instead of a traditional marine AC unit that runs on 120 volts and draws around 1500 watts, we're going to go with something designed for off-grid use, something like the Cruise and Comfort 12 volt DC air conditioner. It's not brand specific here, but I'm just picking on this one. This is a compact split system designed specifically for boats and RVs. It draws directly from your 12 volt batteries, which means it won't be running through your inverter. And that's more efficient because inverter loss is up near 10% on the sort of bad ones. A really good one might be like 7% loss. Depending on the model and the cooling load, you're going to be looking around 400 to 600 watts of power draw while the unit is running. Now, let's say you want to run this AC for eight hours a day, maybe from late morning into the evening when the cabin heats up or overnight if you're trying to sleep in a stuffy, windless anchorage. We're always going to keep in mind that if it's nice outside, we're just going to open the hatches when we sleep. Add an average of 500 watts over eight hours. That's four kilowatt hours of energy needed. So the next question is, can your solar and batteries handle it? If you have a thousand watt solar array in the Caribbean, it'll typically generate between four and six kilowatt hours per day under good conditions. That depends on things like the time of year, the shading from your rigging or your boom, the angle of the panels and how clean that you keep the panels. Let's say you get a very positive five kilowatt hours on a typical day. That's already enough to cover the air conditioning runtime. But of course, you'll have other loads on the boat too. Your fridge and freezer, navigation systems, water pumps, lights, fans, laptops, phones, maybe a water maker. So realistically, you'll probably want at least another 1.5 to 2 kilowatts of headroom per day. This is where your batteries come in. If you can get 800 amp hours of lithium into your boat at 12 volt, you're working with about 9.6 kilowatt hours of stored energy. And because they're lithium, you can safely use about 90% of that. So let's say 8.6 kilowatt hours of actual capacity. That gives you more than enough to run your air conditioner and still have power left over for your other systems, even on cloudy days when your solar production is limited. So the short answer is yes. With a thousand watts of solar and an 800 amp hour lithium bank, you can realistically run a 12 volt air conditioning system on your sailboat for several hours a day, completely off grid. In fact, you could probably stretch that to 10 or 12 hours a day on really good solar days if your energy use everywhere else is fairly conservative. Let's talk about those batteries for a second. Wasn't very long ago when an 800 amp hour setup seemed out of the question. When we all used AGM or golf cart batteries, 800 seemed like a pipe dream. Just having 300 was a very big battery bank. But today, things are a bit different. Lithium is getting much cheaper. I remember a day, not very long ago, when I was thinking someday, lithium will be mass-produced enough and competitive enough to drive the price down. And 
While I didn't really notice it happening, it seems like it has. I've been using these batteries from Lie Time. They're not a sponsor or anything, this is just the ones I happen to be trying, and I've had very good results, and they make this 460 amp hour 12 volt unit that I have had very good experiences with. Two of these nets you 920 amp hours at, let's say 80% to be safe, 740 usable amp hours. Now, it's not unlimited luxury here. You won't be running the AC 24 seven with this setup and you won't be cranking it full blast like you would if you were in a hotel suite. But what you do get is a highly manageable, comfortable, practical, and efficient cooling setup that works with the natural rhythms of cruising life. You use the AC during peak heat, then top up your batteries during the day with the solar and maybe supplement fans or a more passive cooling overnight like wind scoops. It's not wasteful and it respects the limitations of life off grid. Let's break down the strategy a little bit further. First, timing is everything. Run your AC during the middle of the day when solar production is at its peak. So a big portion of the power goes directly from the panels to the AC. That reduces the strain on the batteries and improves overall efficiency. If you can shift four or five hours of cooling into that solar window, you'll dramatically reduce your draw from those batteries. Second, prioritize insulation and airflow. Simple upgrades like reflective hatch covers, UV blocking shades, and light colored upholstery can significantly reduce heat gain in the cabin. You'll wanna make your interior as thermally efficient as possible so your AC doesn't have to work as hard. Combine that with well-placed fans to keep the air moving around and you'll feel cooler even with less active cooling from the AC unit. Third, think about zoning. You probably don't need to cool the entire boat all the time. Maybe just the sleeping cabins or the saloon during the afternoon. That cruise and comfort system allows for targeted cooling because it's a split system. So you can choose where to install the air handler. That keeps energy use down and your comfort up. And finally, it's smart to have some kind of a backup option if you're off grid. Even with a great solar setup and that big battery bank, there will be days where the weather doesn't cooperate. Cloudy days, unexpected guests coming over or higher cooling demands than usual might stretch this system. A small portable generator like a Honda 2200 gives you peace of mind and a way to recharge your batteries or run your AC in a pinch. You probably won't need it very often, but having that redundancy can be a game changer when you're far from shore power. I also noticed that I was able to help a lot of other cruisers because I had a portable generator when they needed it to run power tools when they had some sort of an emergency. So can you run air conditioning on a sailboat with solar? Yes, especially if you've got a smart, efficient setup and a thermally efficient boat. A thousand watts of solar and an 800 amp hour lithium bank give you a solid foundation to do this. Pair that with a low power 12 volt air conditioning unit like that cruise and comfort or something similar and you've got a quiet generator free cooling solution that fits perfectly with the live aboard lifestyle. It's not magic, it's just a matter of balancing energy generation, storage and usage. If you size your system right, pay attention to your habits and embrace efficient equipment, you can stay cool and comfortable wherever you drop the hook. We have a whole article about this over on the Practical Sailor site, so if you're up for a little bit more learning, I'll leave a link in the description. It's definitely worth a read. And if you like learning, hit the thumbs up button on this video so that I know you're out there. And don't forget to subscribe so I can see you again next time.